Hey guys, Kirk from Dick's Taxidermy. So we're back in deer season again, and um, we're caping this deer head out right here. And I just wanted to do a short video um, explaining to you about how to cape out the head to comply with CWD. So we're gonna cape this uh, skin um, off of this head, and uh, then at that time we could roll the skin up and we can put it into a, a freezer or to an ice chest. Um, and then that's gonna be perfectly fine with um, you know coming across uh, the different borders. Um, as far as the skull, when I get farther into this, I'll video um, the skull and show you what um, it takes to be compliant with um, the skull and how it needs to be cleaned. So, um, I will come back to that in a few minutes. I'm gonna get this cape skinned off. Once I get it skinned off, um, then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so you can see here we have uh, the cape uh, caped off of the skull. So now the cape can be uh, rolled up, um, you know, put into um, a plastic bag and then frozen. Um, or it can be put on ice, however you want to transport it. And again, these are, um, these are, these are trophies that you're transporting from one state to another. Uh, most of you might not have heard at the time that I'm making this video, but Arizona just adopted the same law that California has about CWD, uh, not being able to move your trophy from one state to another without prepping it correctly. Um, Nevada also just do adopted that um, law this week and then of course Colorado's always had um, this law implemented in Colorado you cannot move your trophy from one county to another without properly taking care of your skin and your skull so um, this is caped off of the head now I'm going to prep the skull and I'm going to show you what um, what they want to make transporting your skull legal so um, I'll make my cut on my skull and that would be a cut that we're gonna have for a shoulder mount this would be the most minimum cut that you want for a shoulder mount uh, when we'll need uh, this amount of skull but I'm gonna cut it and prep it and then um, I'm gonna show you that and then uh, while I'm standing here um, these are the tools I'm using um, I got a ceramic steel I have a regular um, 10 inch steel that we use and then of course, um, a 102 buck knife. And we use that because of that small blade right there. It's durable, has a good backbone, and I can get um, up underneath the burr um, here to get all of that cape off of there. If we're using a, a Havilon knife, you're not gonna be able to do this job correctly with a Havilon knife. So if you guys are out using a Havilon knife, um, you know, because you're having a hard time sharpening your knives, and so you want a good sharp blade. Um, Havilon is not your choice. Uh, we can get into um, you know what kind of knife to use and how to sharpen knives and all that at a future time. Um, I do have a video on that right now that explains how to do that. But we can uh, we can explain to you how to sharpen a knife um, in the future on a video and help you out so that you can carry a regular hunting knife again and not have to go back to the Havilon knives. So let me prep this skull. I'll get this skull prepped, and then I'll show you uh, what, the, um, what the different uh, states are looking for when it comes into transporting a skull um, correctly. Okay, so before I get too far, uh, prepping this skull. So the minute you see that right there, the minute you see this saw cut, you know something's wrong. This is the bat. This is the neck right here. This is all the neck area. You want to take this off, this neck off at the back of the head, or I should say, you want to remove the neck from the body, where the atlas meets the axis, at the back of the head. You want to remove all of this neck meat. You don't want that neck meat coming in on your shoulder mount. That belongs on your deer carcass. It separates, and it's very important that it's on the deer carcass and not on the skull. Because when you go to cut that skull correctly, that neck being on there hinders you being able to cut the skull correctly. 
So let me go ahead and um, take that neck meat off and then I'm gonna cut the skull and then I'm gonna show you. There you go. So there's what the head should look like. You have cut through the meat and then twisted the head off where the atlas meets the axis at right at the neck. So all this neck meat needs to be on your carcass. You don't wanna leave this neck meat in on your cape because then this esophagus right here, this is the esophagus. This esophagus will um, rot the cape right in the neck and you'll have a slip spot there. So you wanna get all that out of there. Now there's no esophagus left in here. And now we can see where the back of the head is at and we're gonna cut from right here on the back of the head down through the bottom portion of the eye socket out onto the bridge of the nose and then at this angle here. And we're gonna keep the whole top section of that skull for a shoulder mount. And that way, let me put this up here and show you, that way we're gonna get the width at the eye sockets and we're gonna have the bridge of the nose and we're gonna line everything up. That's why we're keeping that. So I'm gonna make that cut now and I'll get back to you. Okay, so here we are. So I've got the skull cut. You can see here where I've started. Let me prop this up here. Started right here at the back of the head. Went through the bottom part of the eye sockets and out onto the bridge of the nose. Now I have all this nose area here. I have my eye width at the back and the front of the eye orbital. So I have those measurements. Now I can alter the mannequin to fit the head correctly. The guys that are cutting all that skull off, they're not doing that. They're not measuring a mannequin, they're just slamming it together. And that's what you get when you have, you know, inferior taxonomy work done. This portion of the head here, this is the part they don't want you to bring them back in. They want you to discard that. So that's what you're bringing back in right there. So I'm gonna clean that skull up and show you what it looks like when it's clean. All right, so here's the skull cleaned up. I removed the eyes from the eye socket. Moved all the brain tissue. There's no more brain tissue in there. So I got all that all cleaned off. You see there's still a little bit more flesh around here. There's still a little bit light, light flesh. But that's all the eyes and meat stuff I took off of that skull. So what I'm gonna do now to make the rest of that little bits of meat go away so that the most critical person won't complain is I'm gonna salt it down. And when I salt it, it'll take what's left there and shrink it by 90%. So let's real quickly, let's go here and look at this. So I'm using a Buck 102. This blade has a real um, heavy backbone in it, something you can get in there and pry and scrape. This is, um, this is the Havilon knife. Um, this knife here is, it's weak, uh, it won't work. It's, uh, it's not made for any of this kind of stuff. You're never gonna be able to do this kind of work right here with a Havilon blade. In fact, you're not gonna be able to cape out your deer correctly without cuts in it with a Havilon blade. If that blade is in your kill, um, your, your kill kit as, uh, as I've heard people call it, um, you know, that's fine. If that's what you wanna do, that's fine. I'm just telling you that the end result with a Havilon blade is going to be um, uh, it's going to be less effective, and, and the quality of skin and skull is going to be less. I don't care how much you use them; um, it's just not going to work. Um, if you get a regular, um, good four-inch hunting knife, hunting with a hunting knife, a hunting blade, four-inch blade, um, it's going to work good for you. And um, then just learn how to sharpen them. Keep them sharp as you're skinning with your steels, and um, you won't have a problem. So now you're done cleaning the skull. Um, you can salt it down like this. Just salt the skull down back like this here. Just salt that skull down real good. And um, that salt will cure all that meat. It will shrink it down about 90%. And then um, you're ready to pack up your skull and your skin uh, to take back to your taxidermist. So I hope this has uh, helped you out. This is Kirk from Dick's Taxidermy. Thanks for watching.